Mushoku Tensei Episode 20! What did the anime skip? Do you think Rudy redeemed himself? Or did he get out of jail way too quickly? I know a lot of you definitely thought Rudy was way too stupid last episode. So go ahead and smash that like and ring the juicy bell. And a quick thank you to the sponsor, Bookwalker. They got you covered for Mushoku, the light novel, and the manga. You can use my code FOX and get a sweet $5 discount. In fact, the Mushoku Light Novel 14 just came out. I'm definitely rereading that. Kicking this off with a new anime scene, them seeing that displacement incident from afar. For starters, you do have the flashback of Lilia holding on to Aisha. And perhaps a more important takeaway, Lilia worried about her daughter. Then what follows, something new for the opening, and really just a complete change. I was like, what the hell when I saw this? You do have the Mushoko light novel that clearly mentions Lilia and Aisha getting teleported inside the castle. In the anime, you now see them appearing inside this lake. So I do throw out the question, why did they change this? Go ahead and post down below, here's my 5 second speculation. Could they have wanted to show something new for the opening? And at the same time also highlighting how much Lilia actually cares about her daughter. For the anime, you really just see Lilia getting locked up at the mansion of Roxy's name. Originally, Lilia was actually suspected of being the spy for this foreign nation. Due to that, she was interrogated, and then after that's when she gave Roxy's name. She was hoping that would help, but then that actually got her confined inside the palace for like two years. Moving along, you do have a new anime detail. Hey, you really got a new cell buddy. Or maybe a snack. Notice right here, the anime did cut out that Mario reference. Rudy really was feeling like Mrs. Peach. Keeping with tradition, notice how the anime did speed this along. Originally, Rudy spent like an entire day inside that cell. He tried all sorts of things to try to get out, like scrubbing the circle on the ground, and even attempting to do a double jump to try to get onto the ceiling. None of it worked. Rudy even thought about that if he only had his staff, he might then be able to smack that ceiling with it. And honestly, Rudy truly was getting desperate. He even considered falsely using Roxy's parents. Hey Pax, old buddy, why not let me tell you where Roxy's parents are at? Although ultimately, Rudy decided against it. He couldn't say anything bad about Roxy. Getting into the friendly Zanoba coming in plus a Richard figure. The anime here skipped a lot of the BS Rudy made up about the figure. That hey, if you had this, you'd be safe from super attacks. Just show them the figure, and then chant that Rudyard loves children. And other non rudyard BS. Like hey, you're gonna get blessed with perfect health and some children. Your skills at the sword may even improve. As for your friendly neighborhood goddess, the Mushoku Light Novel was especially detailed with Rockti's figure too. In case you were wondering the trouble that Roxy was subjected to, the anime skipped it, but here you go. You had Pax stealing her underwear, the dude was also peeking at her when she was bathing. Hmm, doesn't that sound familiar? Right, Rudy? He definitely thought so. Thinking about this actually got Rudy pissed off. He was even ready to show Pax some new form of love. But let's be honest, Rudy wasn't totally oblivious either. Rudy had been locked up so long, he got paranoid that he actually considered it. Had Roxy quit being Rudy's tutor because of all the things he had done? Switching over to Zanoba, here's some fun info. That the guy had a weakness for figures. He collected them from all over the world. I mean, if I ever get trucked, I think we could be besties. So let's fully dive into Roxy and her figure. Here's a mountain of info the anime skipped. You take out a little info about the stonework used by the dwarves, them specializing in rocks and chiseling, that even for the most skilled dwarf, carving something so precise like the Roxy figure would have been extremely difficult. You did get info that complex pieces like the staff were easy to break. Rudy actually had to go through a lot of trial and error to get it down. It required a lot of mana, a lot of concentration, and a lot of time to achieve it. Really an entire day for just that little piece, a centimeter of work. This really speaks to Rudy's level of mastery. In case you were wondering about the cost, Zanova bought it for 5 gold coins, but he claimed he would have easily paid 100 for it. Zanova claimed that if the Temple Knights knew Rudy had possessed this, he would have been put on trial, his status didn't matter, and then Rudy would have been quickly executed for being this demon god worshipper. Zanova then sneaked in some info about Lilia. You might be surprised to find out that Lilia suddenly appeared there at their door one day after Roxy left. They just barely missed each other. This then leads into an anime change. This is the moment where he busted out Rudy's precious box. Or should I say the box holding Rudy's precious item. In the anime, this got moved till way later. Lilia never lost it. At this, you really just had Rudy's mind going blank. He was once again becoming a worshipper of Roxy. Careful dude, or your skin might go green. Unfortunately, the anime even skipped this part entirely, so far that Roxy's panties had been washed. 
In other words, Roxy's cream was no longer infused with him. Switching to another fun topic, you did have the goddess Roxy figure. They truly made her modest. And yes, even the Light Noble doubled down with Roxy being pretty small. No wonder they treat her like a kid. Then, for Rudy demanding Zanoba to re-examine the Roxy figure, Rudy actually gave the reason why he made Roxy like that. Better than this Mushoku Sekai world, this concept of 18 plus was not a thing. This was the reason why Rudy chose to not reveal Roxy's special place. By the way, is that a Reza reference? Let me know if you notice this too. You have Zonova here, look at his clothing. I can't be the only one seeing Beetlejuice. Hell, they even have the same haircut. Even the way this guy walks and carries himself is similar. They really could be brothers from a different witch. I mean, you just had Pax being the discount Kazuma last episode. I'm sure of it now, this is definitely not just a coincidence. Anyway, let's keep on going with the anime skip. Originally, Rudy actually admitted it that he used the underwear he was most familiar with as a reference. He actually went on to reveal that the goddess had four different pairs of underwear at a time. That Roxy was quite fashion conscious. Then for Zenoba pleading to call Rudy his master, Rudy was instead still thinking of Roxy. How dare this guy use her name without this proper title. In other words, still kissing up to Miss Roxy. Rudy's thoughts then went to the man god here that perhaps that shady individual first saw this happening, that Rudy would be taken to the castle and then eventually meet this dude, that they would bond together and that would be how he would escape. Switching over to the palace soldier uprising. At first when I saw this in the anime, I was wondering, was this all in the light novel? Let me confirm it was, but the somewhat complex plan actually got explained pretty quickly. I'm totally fine with it being cut down for the anime. A lot of this stuff I feel was not important, or I just found myself not caring too much. The more important detail left out involved the slave market again. That after Roxy fled, Pax actually established his contact with the slave market. This actually was how he established his own private army and then used them to take the soldiers' families hostage. At this point, I'm really just super curious to see how the slave market stuff will be introduced later. Eventually, it's going to be a major plot point that can't be removed too easily. Anyway, back to Rudy. You actually saw the guy second guessing himself. That maybe, just maybe, he was wrong about doubting Mr. Mangod. That maybe Rudy was the one that messed up. For a new anime scene, you did see Eris and Aisha. They actually were not around for the attack on Pax plan. Like at all. For a split second, I actually thought they would follow or actually be inspired by the manga events. I was like, aww, anime Eris is being left out again. Sorry manga readers if you got excited. For those of you wondering about the magic circle, just know there is another magic circle drawn on top of it. You might have also heard that Zenoba traded his last knight for that Roxy figure. Just to confirm, that was Ginger. Sorry girl. Next up, let's actually get into some juicy info about the blessed child. I would have bet money out of anything this would have been cut down. The anime gave you this 25 second explanation. Blessed Children has special abilities, which includes running fast, having superhuman strength, enhanced hearing, their bodies being extremely light, or the opposite, extremely heavy. They could freeze anything they touch, they could breathe fire, they have poison-tipped fingers, they could teleport short distances, they could shoot lasers like Superman, they could nullify any poison, they don't require any sleep, they could devour 100 females and still be hungry for more, and so on. You also have something called a cursed child. They really are a part of the same coin. If you were born with one of these abilities that's not too useful or just sucks, you're just labeled a cursed child. You then get into Zanoba's backstory, this guy being a blessed child. He was born unusually strong. Interestingly, his mother was one of the concubines. So this guy being born actually came as truly a blessing. Except there is that little issue you heard about Zenoba tearing his brother's coconut. This actually happened a second time, when he was 15. This is why he became known as the Head Ripping Prince, or as the Funimation subs put it, the Decapitator Prince. One of the most insane facts about this is that Zenoba was the strongest military power the kingdom possessed. I don't know whether to be impressed or just feel sorry for the kingdom. For some, uh, do you want to call this anime censoring or just removed? You originally did have blood and killing. Zenoba actually killed two of Pax's Imperial Guards before actually taking him hostage. I mean, when he was gripping his brother Pax's head, you should have seen blood dripping all the way down. Another anime change here was that their other brothers were originally in the Rudy scene, the first and second prince. 
For a lovely new anime edition, you did have anime heirs letting them know that Rudyard, aka the Super, actually saved their families. I quickly did double check this, since originally during this whole incident, there actually wasn't a mention of Rudyard being from the Super tribe at all. Which means plus one for the anime for the Ninja Demon Bro. Gotta heal up that reputation. Keeping up with the new anime scenes, you also had Pax getting that broken twisted arm. Looking like a KFC wing there, buddy. For a different anime changeup, they actually didn't tell Ginger about certain events. While in the anime, she was clearly part of the whole thing. For something new and I totally got caught off guard, you got Rudy being broken like a gingerbread man. Okay, this kinda makes up for the anime skipping Rudy breaking his legs last episode. But just to be clear, technically, this did happen just later in the light novel. He has a note by asking Rudy for another figure. Rudy promised that if they ever do meet again, he'll actually teach him how to make them from scratch. He was so happy, he threw Rudy in the air and then he came crashing down. Although, light novel Rudy also hit the ceiling. For that fork in the road. So he had two pathways, one leading to the holy country of Millis, and the other to the Sora Kingdom. Briefly, you did see Eris bragging about her boy toy. I mean Rudy. Light novel Eris also bragged about him being able to flood the forest and then freeze it all solid. Getting to some fun Lydia stuff. So quick anime change here, you had Lydia hugging from behind and then also giving that goddess box. Originally, Rudy got smacked right in the face with some goodness. I actually really loved anime Lydia being thankful of Rudy's safety. She did however leave out that this happened to be the second time her life got saved by him. As for her claiming that Aisha wasn't so amazing, not like Rudy. Rudy actually considered that Aisha may also be just like him, someone reincarnated. So he actually tried to ask her about televisions and phones, but no go, Aisha is totally normal. The anime then removed the falling scene of Lilia practically offering her daughter Aisha over to Rudy to feast on. Thankfully, Rudy didn't want any part of that. Lilia originally even asked Rudy to go ahead and just take her. Take her on your travels. In reality, Lilia truly had been raising Aisha almost as a prize for Rudy to enjoy. And I do mean everything, including the body. Further skip was Rudy's growth, or maybe I should just say weirded out like anyone would be in this situation. This whole discussion of Aisha almost being like a meal made him uncomfortable. To be honest, I had never really been a fan of this whole Lilia and Aisha subplot. I'm so glad the anime axed it. A little bit later, you saw Lilia reassuring Rudy that he was not a pervert. Especially not compared to some of the stuff she's seen during her time as a maid at the royal palace. Apparently one of those noble folks really enjoyed a ladies lemonade. Whether that's regular or the strawberry kind, I'll leave that for you to wonder. Switching over to Aisha, you heard Aisha again call Rudy a pervert. Light novel Rudy actually gave you an answer to why he actually loves Roxy's undies. You know, there's people that worship the clothing that this holy person once wore. The ones that Rudy swiped were actually the ones that Roxy wore when she was going single player mode on herself. It was truly this rare item. Further cut was Rudy explaining to Aisha how Roxy had been such a great impact to him. That Roxy had been the person that helped Rudy do something that he hadn't been able to do in 20 years. The reason he was living a life like this was all due to Roxy. For a new anime edition, you did have Lilia listening in on their sweet talk. I really did love this. The anime then skipped Aisha's second request. That hey, her brother is missing. He might be dead. Why don't you allow me to serve you instead? Which Rudy was really not a fan of either. For a different anime change, you did have light novel Aisha revealing that she knew who Rudy was before she got onto the carriage. Next up, let me go down the skip status update for everyone. First off, Pax. In reality, this bastard was being sent to the King Dragon Realm to be held as a hostage. Who knows, he may just die. Zanoma actually did get sent away to study. A new anime edition was him holding those two figures shown. For Lilia, even though she actually got released, they still claimed she was a spy for a different country. Apparently Lilia had been so resourceful that under Pax, she made herself useful by gathering information for him behind the scenes. Oh, and it was a little difficult to see in the anime, but yes, that was Ginger escorting Lilia over, and Aisha too. For the actual Shirone Kingdom, the king actually offered Rudy to stay in the region. How about just being a replacement for Roxy? But of course, Rudy declined. For the man god, Rudy was still feeling that he was dancing in the palm of the guy's hand. Was he just watching this terrible play unfold? At the same time, so far, none of the man god's advice had given Rudy horrible results. So now it was settled, a promise was a promise. Next time Rudy saw him, he wouldn't get this attitude and be all pissy. So definitely post down below what you think about this episode. Did Rudy redeem himself? Or did it feel too easy? I think I thought that too when I read the light novel. 
Let me know what you thought down below or just say hi. And also check out my new video going over anime locations in real life here in Japan, the Digimon Edition. If you haven't already, don't miss last week's video. Something else Mushoku related may be coming this Friday, so definitely subscribe and ring the bell. And I'll see you guys later.